Welcome back in ladies and gentlemen. Today we're gonna to talk about possibly the most loved dividend consumer staple stock. That's gonna be Hormel Foods. Now a few things I wanna talk through today is specifically dividends and making sure that you're not falling into a dividend trap. So while we're reviewing and getting a price target for Hormel Foods on this recent sell-off, we're gonna talk about how you can avoid stepping into a bear trap when it comes to looking at dividend yields. So hopefully you guys enjoy and find a lot of value in this. I just ask that you smash the thumbs up, consider subscribing, and let's get into Hormel Foods. Now, Hormel Foods is usually a stock that doesn't move a lot, and it's down 33% on the year. That is a huge drawdown for a stock like Hormel Foods, a consumer staples, flight to safety type of stock, and a stock that normally doesn't have a tremendous amount of price action. And looking at the forward PE here, we see that it's trading at 20 times forward earnings. And this tends to be pretty expensive when we compare them to their peers. We have to understand that this is a company that's been fiscally responsible overall, paying dividends for 57 years and growing those dividends for 57 consecutive years but there's a difference between dividends and total returns, okay? So total returns is what your true return was on that equity. That's dividends and that's stock appreciation. If we look through the last few years of dividend growers and companies that pay heavy dividends, the total returns have massively underperformed the overall market. I'm talking about companies like AT&T, Verizon, Hormel Foods. These types of companies that have consistently paid pretty large dividends their stock prices have actually been down 30, 40, and even 50% in some cases. So we can't just look at a dividend. What dividends are is basically returning capitals to shareholders in the form of a payment, but it's coming from profits. And so what needs to happen? Profits need to keep growing in order for this stock appreciation to keep going up. So if earnings are kind of remaining flat, but yet they keep raising that dividend, well, you can bet that the stock price is most likely going to come down. And this has been a clear case for Hormel Foods. So if we just look at a long-term chart on Hormel Foods, so the first thing I want to do is just open up a long 10-year chart of this company. And we can see that stock price, we can go back nearly 10 years and we are reapproaching this 10-year level. Yes, it hit a high of $55, but we're going to talk through why this stock hasn't moved. And if you haven't reinvested those dividends, you probably massively underperformed the S&P 500. And so what I want to do is just highlight a specific area just so you guys can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about here. So if we go back 10 years on Hormel Foods, they were earning roughly 50 to 69 cents a share on EPS every quarter. At that point in time, they were paying a 20 cent dividend. And we can see as they grew the dividend, the stock price appreciated, but take a look at earnings here. Earnings are doing what? They're actually coming down 39 cents a share, 41 cents a share, 56 cents a share, 39 cents a share. So we move about five years forward here and we can see that earnings, earnings per share are actually flat to down. Fast forward to today, where the stock price is basically reapproaching at 10 year levels. And look at this. Earnings per share, 40 cents, 40 cents, 42 cents. But the problem is what? They are actually paying a larger dividend now, 28 cent dividend. So the dividends increased by roughly 40%, but earnings have decreased by like 10, 15%. And we can see that this is a cause for bad investing here because look at this movement from going from $55 down to $30. So what we wanna do is give realistic expectations and try to figure out what a fair market price is for a company like Hormel Foods. And Hormel is everywhere, guys. I mean, they have a tremendous amount of brands, a pretty solid moat here, very big footprint in the consumer staples area. Everything from Skippy to Spam to Valley Fresh. So if we look at top line revenue growth, it's been steadily growing, going from 9.5 billion up to right around $12 billion of top line revenue growth. And we have to remember though, what is Hormel Foods doing? They keep raising that dividend and paying out higher and higher dividend payouts, which then takes away from the profits and reinvesting in the dividend or reinvesting in their business and also possibly knocking down debt, which would appreciate stock value. So there's multiple things you can do with profits. You can pay down debt, you can pay a dividend, you can reinvest in mergers and acquisitions, you can go and research and development. So with those profits, they can do many different things and they decide to grow a dividend and repay investors. But once again, what I wanna point out is what we've pointed out on 
the longer term chart here, this was a company that was doing basically a dollar and 90 cents of earnings and now doing a dollar 45 cents of earnings. And there's multiple reasons why that is, you know, could be the cost of goods being sold. Inflation could be a massive problem for them. And so we could see EPS grow as inflation comes down and the consumer starts staying at home and does more shopping and that could grow top line revenue. So there's many different things that are going to move the needle for the company, but I'm just giving you a broad overlook of what I see as a problem and what's been a problem over the last 10 years for the company. And with EPS coming down, we see the dividend per share growing, going from 68 cents a year to $1.10 a year. Also, we're seeing gross margins coming down from 21, nearly 22%, down to 16.5%. So margins are coming down. They're paying out a big portion of their profits. So let's start plugging in some numbers and see what we should be paying for a stock like Hormel Foods. Now, the next step is figuring out how much they could grow. When we take a look at analyst expectations, we have price targets as low as $26 and as high as $47. Now, this is a company that's not projected to do a tremendous amount of growth, roughly 2 to 3% basically keeping up with inflation. So we started plugging in some numbers on Hormel Foods, but we want to give ourselves realistic expectations to expect for the company. So for revenue growth, we're going to do what projections are. And then we're going to say that they're going to do between two and 3% revenue growth pretty consistently. Now, of course, if they make an acquisition or if developing, if they start developing new products within their pipeline that start taking off, then obviously we have to reevaluate the situation here. They're basic, we're just trying to project them out of what they can do currently. So they're currently doing right around 11% EBITDA margins, and they've done as high as roughly 13 to 14%. So to err on some caution here, we're gonna say they're gonna do 11 for the first couple of years, 11% EBITDA margins, 12% EBITDA margins, and we'll bump it up in year six through 10 that they get EBITDA margins back to normal, right around 14% EBITDA margins. We wanna figure out a multiple of enterprise value to EBITDA, okay? So we wanna kind of get an idea of what sector median is trading for and currently what they're trading for right now. So sector median trades for about 12 to 13 times EV to EBITDA, and we can see here that Hormel Foods trades for roughly 15 times that. And normally when you're getting a premium multiple, there's a few reasons why. Either you have a competitive advantage, meaning that your margins are usually better than most of your competitors, you have a bigger footprint, a bigger moat. So there's something usually about the business model that's deserving a premium, could be growth as well. So looking for a double digit rate of return, basically reinvesting the dividends and looking for nearly a double digit rate of return. I'm looking for a 12, 13% rate of return here with dividends reinvested. I'm basically getting a 23 to $28 price target for Hormel Foods and getting a future value in 2032 of roughly $49 a share, which the stock has hit as high as $55 a share. So everything is pretty much in line exactly with what I'm saying here. The story that I'm telling myself is very consistent, and I think my expectations are very realistic. You know, once again, we can see that it wasn't that long ago that the stock was trading for $53 a share, is now basically cut nearly in half, sitting at $30 a share. And I'd be probably interested in the stock if it breaks below that $30 mark, getting in $28, $27 a share. You would have a high yield that's fairly safe when we look at EPS, even though EPS is probably not gonna grow drastically. If they get any sort of EPS growth here, you're probably going to see pretty significant stock appreciation with the company, especially if they're still growing the dividends on top of that. So that's my dive into Hormel Foods, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and as always, really appreciate your time. Thanks for spending it with me.